Hi everybody, back again with another episode of the vlog, it's been a wee while, been quite busy, um, but I thought I'd make this one and check in with you, see how it's going. Um, so the last one I was saying how, like, uh, like my first offshore trip of the year had just been cancelled, maybe the second, I can't remember when I made it. Um, well, basically we're getting into the end of September and every offshore trip I've booked so far this year has been cancelled. Um, because of typhoons, it's been absolutely terrible. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what you know. But, uh, global warming, I suppose, is the uh, or climate change. Um, been just been a really bad year for weather. Um, I was looking at my notes actually. Um, so far this year, I've only fished thirty two days, uh, including like, when I've been on holiday and stuff. Um, I mean, normally. I'm around 100, 120 for the year, fishing days. Um, but the weather's just been shocking. The trip's been cancelled. It's been, it's been. It's, there's not been much fishing done this year at all. Um, but uh, it's, it's the last few weeks have been not bad I suppose here. Um, in the last video I mentioned that like, cicada time was just happening and um, I managed to get out for a few a few days out during the cicada fall um, which was good uh, mostly just targeting carp on the dry fly which was fun uh, quite a few days you know you could probably there were days when this, the hatch was wasn't really going and you might have caught more fish on a subsurface fly, but it was fun just catching them in dries. Uh, I managed a few days uh, on the float tube, bass, snakehead, that kind of stuff. I uh, also I caught some fish that I didn't even know existed. Um, it's like a sort of silver type of carp species that they have here in Japan. So that was relatively interesting. Um, but other than that, there's not been much fishing. Um, as we get into September and October, I'll maybe manage some late season smallmouth. Uh, but I don't really have much planned as far as fishing over the next few weeks, um, unfortunately. Um, I'll be moving apartments, so that might cause a wee bit of um, disruption on the video front, but we'll see how we go. Um, so book recommendation for this one is Matching the Hatch by uh, Pat O'Reilly. Very good book. It's a very good book. Um, covers both still waters and rivers and a range of in insects, other invertebrates, fish, various different prey species. It's not just an entomology book. Right? There's Suggestions for um, bait fish and, and, and leeches and, and, and snails. Um, it's a good book for. It's a really good book if you're a beginner, right? If you if you're relatively new to fly fishing, it's a especially if you target trout, but not only. Um, really, really, really good book. Um, it also there's also some suggested imitations which. You might think, oh, they're a bit sort of. Some of them might seem a bit dated, but really, I mean, they're effective flies. You know, uh, the fish don't care. It's only people that care about fly patterns and what's new. Um, and I think one one of the key things about this book is is this magnificent seven concept, um, which is really great if you're starting out and you want to sort of build a box. Um, you get these seven flies that, and suggested imitations and sizes and things. It's, 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 it's really, it's really a good way to approach building a box. Um, it makes matching hatches quite accessible for for you. And even if you're whether you're tying or buying, it's a good start. It's a good starting point, um, and I, I definitely recommend it. As always, I'll put the Amazon link in the description below. If you use my link, it won't cost you any more, but it will help me out. I'd really appreciate it if you choose to buy the book. Um, one thing I did want to talk about was um, I've seen online that recently ad 
advertisements and people posting things in groups for two of the most pointless tools in fly tying I can imagine. Um, one of them is the maw and it's for hollow tying and reverse tying. It's been, I, mean, I, I remember like, I read the advert that was like, like painstaking research on this. It's just a tube, right? If you've watched any of my videos where I've hollow tied like, tying pipe flies or stuff, an old pen, that's all this thing is and they went $25 for it, right? Utter nonsense. Right, a total waste of money. Like, if you want to buy one, buy one. But like, I find it really disturbing that folk are susceptible to that that kind of nonsense. You know, like, um, it worries me. The other one, which on the face of it may appear to be less pointless, is the Futurefly hackle doubler. It's just a wee metal fork kind of thing, and a bit of metal it will. A wee metal triangle with like a, a, a V at the tip, it's not even really a fork. You're supposed to run it along your hackle stem to, to fold your hackle. I've never used a tool to fold a hackle in my life. Um, but if you do feel that you you want to like, use some kind of thing to help you, use, a, use it, a single scissor blade and you can run it along the, the, you can run it along the hackle stem. You don't need to worry about cutting the hackle and it will fold it lovely and do exactly the same job and you've already got the, the scissors on your bench. You don't need to go or even in your hand. You don't need to be looking around for another tool. I just, I don't know, there's something about that happens quite often I think in fly fishing in particular where like, in order to sell you something people are, imagine, are inventing needs for you and a lot of people buy into it, you know. Um, and it's just, I, I, I don't know, I find it really kind of annoys me in some way, you know, so especially if you watch this and you're somebody that's new to fly tying don't waste your money on those things, right, buy nice materials, right that, look that, you know, the 50, the 50 bucks that you would spend between those two tools that's a nice drive like it and it's something that you actually get a point that you can use, right so uh, that's my thoughts on that <laughs> um, whether you agree or not, I, I, I don't know, but um, you can let me know in the bottom, um, uh, in the comment section. Now, um, the my online recommendations are a bit different for usual, maybe this week, um, in that it's for Froden flies, right? Which is Mikael Froden's um, website. Now, I don't usually recommend shops, right, um, I mean, because obviously this is a fly shop, but and it caters exclusively to tying salmon flies, right, it's almost, it's basically tying salmon tubes, right, um, he just sells his material, so it's, it's not like a, it's not like a full, fully stocked fly shop, um, although he's got some good deals and all that, but that's, you know that, um, but he's got a video archive, which is worth having a look at if you're interested in tying tube flies, if you're interested in tying salmon flies. Um, tips, so there's some tips on fly tying, there's tips on salmon fishing tackle, uh, there's fishing tips and there's destination tips. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, it's worth a look, you don't need to buy it. Um, but you can see some of his, his fly patterns. He's a very successful salmon angler. Uh, and I found it. I mean, I found it quite interesting. You can download like a a, a guide chart to how his uh, fit system works. If you're interested in plastic time plastic tubes, um, I know like Pro Sport Fisher and Future Fly and all that. They've maybe popularised uh, the flexible tube systems over the last few years, but really, uh, Mickey he come up he come up with that um, system. Oh, I don't know. I mean, twenty years ago, maybe uh, the Fitz system, and it is still probably. I mean, it's, it, the others aren't better anyway. You know, it's, it's, the others are, if they are, they're as good as it. Um, in my opinion, if they are as good as it, I think the Froden system might still be better because he's expanded it and added things. 
Um, and it's probably better value as well. Um, I was just looking recently when I went to the shop and I bought some of these like the flexi tube needles or something for some reason. Uh, flexi tubes, not the needles. And they were like the pack are like as a ten in the pack. They were quite expensive. Um, whereas you could buy just two, you know, a tube of medium and a tube of extra small black Froden Fitz tubing for about the same price and whereas you would get 10 from the flexi tube pack you would get a, I don't know, 50 or so, or so from the the, the Froden packs it's, to me that's also a kind of no brainer when, there's, when the quality is at least as good maybe better so I suppose that's it for this one um, probably the next time I do a vlog it will be in slightly different surroundings, we'll see um, and we'll be kind of getting into October so there'll, there'll probably be hopefully some more fly time videos coming out and we'll try to get them out a bit more as I'm, as I'm kind of get the moving and everything out of the way and then maybe something from uh, the fly time show in Malaysia as well in the not too distant future so thanks very much for watching guys uh, as always, I'll put a link to the Patreon and, and everything and the Amazon links below. I appreciate any support that you can give the channel. Um, tight lines. Bye.